Hey folks, how you doing? Papa Joe here. Want to uh, touch base with you a little bit on some current events and trucking. The uh, glider kits that you hear us talking about. As of yesterday, July 1st, according to what I'm hearing, they are no longer available. The manufacturers are not going to make any more. Bummer. Uh, I've been hearing for a couple of years that the government was going to cut them back on how many they could make. And they finally did... Uh, the 300 and some odd per manufacturer per year. So, uh, the manufacturers are saying, you know, that ain't enough to make it worthwhile. For those that don't know, a glider kit is a complete new truck except the motor. You have everything for a new truck, transmission, drive line, everything except a motor. People would buy them and rebuild an old motor and put it in there. That way they didn't have to deal with all the emissions and pollutions and ELDs and different stuff. Some of them still had to run ELDs, but, uh, but anyhow, they're no longer going to be available. And if you don't have one ordered, you ain't going to get to order. It's over with. Those of us that track anything happening in the trucking industry, we're not surprised. Are you? You know, it was a back door to keep Big Brother from controlling us in one way or another keeping them out of our pockets and they don't like that they want to be in control so they just figured out another way to do it same thing with the gun control the second amendment what they've been trying ain't been working but they're going to keep trying until they figure out a way to get our guns or our ammunition if you don't have a stockpile of ammunition, all you got is a very expensive club. So, it is what it is. That's trucking for you. The, uh, the thing is, is it's going to hurt some little mom and pops. Because they don't have all this DEF stuff, all this pollution and all this nonsense they were shooting for, it's not perfected. You remember a few months ago, my truck was down for like three weeks because of DEF nonsense. Uh, and I was telling you in that video, there were several people in there that was down with DEF stuff. They don't have it perfected. The government put an unrealistic timeline on them they thought that it was a good timeline and the uh, manufacturing brains that work on all that didn't have enough time to figure it all out. Go figure. But it all sounded good on paper. And just like this logbook stuff, these ELDs, it all sounded good on paper. But when it comes to applying it and working with it, it has its faults. Once again, it was them not researching. People making laws and rules in an industry that they don't understand. And it looked good on paper, so it must work. Uh, here's something I want to read to you. Rules controlling truck driver time said to be relaxed. This is out of Opal, Virginia. Truck driver Lucas Francis was forced to hit the brakes just five minutes from his house in Pennsylvania. 
He had reached the maximum number of hours in a day he's allowed to be on duty. Francis couldn't leave the truck unattended, so he parked and climbed, climbed into the sleeper berth in the back of the cab. Ten hours would have to pass before he could start driving again. You don't want even a one-minute violation, said Francis, a 39-year-old a uh, Haiti immigrant recalling his dilemma during a break at a truck stop in this small crossroad town southwest of Washington. The Transportation Department is moving to relax the federal regulations that require Francis to pull over. A long sought goal of the trucking industry and a move that would highlight its influence with the Trump administration. Interest groups that represent motor carriers and truck drivers have lobbied for revisions, they say, would work, make the rigid hours of service rules more flexible. But highway safety advocates are warning the contemplated changes would dangerously weaken the regulations, resulting in driver, truckers putting in even longer days at a time when they say driver fatigue is such a serious problem. They point to new government data that shows fatal crashes involving trucks weighing as much as 80,000 pounds have, have increased. I think flexibility is a code word for deregulation, said Kathy, excuse me, Kathy Chase, president of Advocates for Highway and Auto Safety, an alliance of insurance companies and consumer public health and safety groups. She said the hours of service requirements, which permit drivers to drive up to 11 hours each day are already exceedingly liberal in their estimate. In their estima estimation. There were 4,657 large trucks involved in fatal crashes in 2017. A 10% in increase from the year before according to a May report issued by Federal Motor Carrier Safety, an agency of the Transportation Department. Sixty of the truckers in these accidents were identified as asleep or fatigued. Although the National Transportation Safety Board has said this type of driver impairment is likely underreported, on police crash forms. The NTSB has declared a fatigue a pre pervasive problem in all forms of transportation and added reducing. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, and added reducing fatigue related accidents to its 2019 to 2020 most wanted list of safety improvements. A groundbreaking study by the Transportation Department more than a decade ago reported 13% of truck drivers involved in crashes that resulted in fatalities or injuries or fatigue at the time of the accident. The trucking industry developed a strong relationship with President Donald Trump, imagine that, who had made rolling back layers of regulation oversight a top priority. At least a dozen transportation safety rules under development or already, already ad adopted were repelled, withdrawn, delayed, or put on the back burner during Trump's first year in office. 
First of all, this administration is not as aggressive as the prior, said Bill Sullivan, the top lobbyist for the powerful American Trucking Association, whose members include the nation's largest motor carriers. Imagine that. Gotta get my phone plugged back in. Uh, whose members include the nation's largest motor carriers and trucking manufacturing companies. Most importantly, the partnership with them has not been as suspicious of industry as in the past. Trucking interests had pressed the administration and Congress for the rule changes and last year secured support from 30 senators mostly Republicans. The lawmakers wrote in a May 2018 letter to the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, Chief Ray Martinez, that the rules do not provide the appropriate levels of flexibility and, and asked him to explore improvements. Independent truckers in particular have chaffed at what they see as a one-size-fits-all directive written by Washington bureaucrats who don't understand what they face on the highways. How can you judge me and what I do by sitting in a cubicle in an office, said Terry Button, a burly hay farmer from upstate New York who owns his truck Button estimates he's logged about 4 million miles since he started driving a truck in 1976. He said he's never caused an accident, although he's been hit twice by passenger vehicles. The regulations have existed since the 1930s are enforced by the motor carrier, blah, blah, blah. The regulations current limit long haul drivers to 11 hours of driving time. We know all that. Uh, let's see, and a driver who is going to be driving for more than eight hours must take a 30 minute break before hitting eight hour mark. Breaking the rules can be costly. A trucker might be declared out of service for a day or longer for going beyond the time limits. Many are paid by the mile, so if they're not driving, they're not making money. Francis, who was hauling 45,000 pounds of drinking water to a Walmart warehouse in Woodland, Pennsylvania, said he gets 50 cents a mile. Let's see. Off-duty and on-duty time for most truckers is recorded automatically and precisely by electronic logging devices, or ELDs. Responding to a congressional directive, the Obama administration set in motion the mandated use of ELDs as of December 2017, a regulatory requirement that Trump has not overturned. Paper logs could be fudged pretty easily, but not the ELD, which is wired to the truck's engine and has a display screen visible to the driver. Chase's organization says an accurate accounting of a trucker's hours is one of the most effective ways to help prevent drowsy driving. But for many truckers, the logging device have only highlighted the inflexibility and complexity of the regulation. If you run out of time in the middle of the George Washington Bridge, are you just going to pull over and park, said Button, referring to the world's busiest span connecting New Jersey and New York. The Owner-Operator Independent Drivers Association which represents small business truckers like Button, said the schedule directed by the rules is out of step with the daily realities confronting most of their members. Heavy traffic, foul weather, and long waits for cargo 
to be loaded or unloaded keep them idle. All the while, the 14-hour clock keeps on ticking, pushing them to go faster to make up for lost time. Uh, especially vexing as a mandatory break requirement, according to the organization. Uh, the pause forces drivers to pull over when they don't really need to rest. He said, and parking for a big rig is often hard to find, and they may end up stopping in unsafe places such as a highway. Spencer's organization, which says it has more than 160,000 members, has been pushing for the 30-minute break to be eliminated. <coughs> In comments filed with the Transportation Department, the group recommended that truckers instead be allowed to, uh, to efficiently stop, uh, effectively stop the clock, the 14-hour clock, for up to three consecutive hours. During this off-duty period, drivers could rest or simply wait out heavy traffic. This is not rocket science stuff, Spencer said. Rest when it makes sense to rest. Drive when it makes sense to drive. But critics of the stop the clock idea said that that would result in 17 hour work days, heightening the risk of drowsy driving and accidents. There's no guarantee a trucker can or will sleep during that three-hour stop, and a number of them would be driving at the end of a long period of being awake, according to the American Academy of Sleep Medicine, a professional society of doctors and science. Wow. And it goes on. Uh, not much more to it. You know, doing away with a 30-minute break is a smart idea. It hurts a bunch of us. Anybody that's paying attention. We'll never get rid of the ELD. That ain't gonna happen. And that one hand is right bunch of yahoos up there that ain't got a clue about trucking. And they're making the rules for you and I. That ain't nothing new. That's been going on forever and today. The, uh, the biggest thing that they really need to do is they need to figure out how to control the timing of the shippers and receivers. Do away with your 30 minute breaks and being that we have these electronic logs that control you and I, the truckers that's on here, uh, let's use the same technology for our shippers and receivers. If you're going to pass these laws controlling us, and that's all it is, is they want control, then, uh, Put some kind of law in that if it goes over two hours to get loaded or unloaded past your appointment time, then they have to pay. Now what's wrong with that picture? For one thing, it's giving the government too much control. But now not only are they controlling us, now they can control the companies. 
if this is implemented and they did such a thing, who's going to say how much they need to pay? Who's going to enforce it? All of us as drivers know that that's the problem out here. And there ain't no one size fits all on fixing it. Just like there ain't a one size fits all for the ELDs and the hours of service we're dealing with. But at least they're talking and blowing smoke. Now I find it quite amazing how they uh, find a way to blame Trump. Everything is Trump's fault. Plum crazy. Plum crazy. Uh, on a brighter side, an improvement, I was also reading where uh, they did a study at uh, Texas College down there, A&M, I guess it was. And they was checking out uh, the manufacturing of these four-wheelers of cars and they found out that that long oblong piece of glass that's attached to your windshield high up and in the center you know the one that you use for hanging stuff off of and doing your makeup did you know the manufacturers actually put that in there for you to look behind you A lot of people don't know how to do it, but that's what it's really up there for. And not only that, this will help some of you truck drivers. They also found out that them two pretty things that they put on each door, that really isn't just cosmetics. They said that will actually let you see what's coming up behind you and beside you. So that you don't just pull over in front of people. It's amazing. If you don't already know how to use those three devices, it'd be nice if you start trying it. It might help you. It might help the rest of us. With that, I'm going to let you go. Remember, God loves you. So do I. Have a blessed day. Oh, that article I was reading. Go to the Facebook page for Simple Living with Papa Joe. I put it over there. You can go over there and find it. Click on it. Read it your own self. Y'all be safe out there now. Bye.